Today on Karamo, this woman knows her man cheats on her. So this is a video of you having sex with another woman. <laughs> and knows she's in a toxic relationship. Are you dumb? Are what you he, dumb? What, look at this unhealthy communication right here. But does she actually have the inner strength to leave him? I didn't come on the show to end this. I come on the show to fix this. I love you. But first, I even got chills reading that. Hope has been trying to find out who her real father is. I just don't understand why she has to make it so hard. Since she was 14 years old. And it's getting exhausting, right? It's possible this man could be her father. Hope says she thinks that you're afraid of knowing the truth. Is that true? And today, the outcome of an incredible DNA test. There you go. You can open it. <laughs> will change Hope's life forever. OK. Welcome to the show, friend. Today, we are solving a DNA mystery. My first guest, Hope, has been searching for her father for 23 years without any clue of his identity. But just three years ago, at a gas station, she met a man named Tim who approached her and said, I think I might be your dad, and I'd love to take a DNA test. Hope has been wrestling with this information for the last three years, and today, she's finally ready to sit with Tim and learn the truth. Everyone. Please welcome Hope to the show. Hi, Hope. Hey. Well, isn't this yellow pretty on you? Yes. And the bling? Work. <laughs> I live. All right, Hope. Tell me about the day that you met Tim at the gas station. OK, so um, my husband at the time, who was my boyfriend, was telling me about this dude named Tim. And he was saying, oh, how much I looked like him, how we had similarities and mm -hmm. our eye color and everything. And I'm not even kidding. When I tell you, like, 10 minutes later, we go to this gas station, and this guy's like, hey, where's Hope at? So he goes out to the car, and he gets me. And I walk into the store, and this guy's like, hey, I think I might possibly be your father. I would like to do a DNA test. Were you surprised by that? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. Mean, who wouldn't? Well, you would have been shocked. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So in that moment, why did you think that he could possibly be your dad? I didn't. I mm -hmm. really didn't. Because my mom had told me, like, for years after, like, he asked for the DNA test that it was, like, completely impossible. Like, she never did nothing with him. So, you know, I believed her because she's my mom. But before I, like, I submitted the request to come on here and everything, I texted him. I was like, before we even go on this show, I would want to know, like, why do you think you're my dad? Mm -hmm. Like, my mom said, you know, I just never did nothing. Like, it'd be kind of pointless to come on a show and you're not my dad, you yeah, know? Yeah, of course. Um, so he told me the story. And before that, my mom was telling me about the story, how she was hanging out with some friends. And she didn't know who the guy she was hanging out with. And she gave me the names and everything. Well, he tells me the exact same story with her friend. So I was like, oh, two and two is adding up now. She yeah. really did do something with this guy. and she's you know, lying. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, a So what bit. were you told about your father growing up? I thought it was his cousin my entire mm. life. Yeah. So you thought Tim's cousin was your father? Yeah, for a while, until I was 14, and then we did a DNA test, and he wasn't. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, that's the first time I seen Tim. Uh, he was at the courthouse with his cousin. And, uh, and the DNA test with the cousin. Yeah. Can I ask you a question just to go back? What was your childhood like? What was life like growing up? It was rough. I lived from house to house. Mm. I didn't hardly ever live with my mom, um, mainly family members. I jumped from my mom's best friend to my aunt to my great aunt, back to my mom's best friend, back to my great aunt. Mm. I lived with my grandma until I was five years old. Um, so, and you have siblings, right? Yes, I have four of them. And do you, they're all sisters? Yes. And do your sisters know who their father is? Yes. So, OK. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get. Like, how can you have three? She has three different other baby daddies. But um, how do you know their dads and not mine? Do you think that Tim might be your father now, that you heard that story and they line up? I'm hoping. I really do. Um, mm. I have a lot of. I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like deep down inside, maybe possibly he might be my dad, you know? Yeah. Just that feeling. Producers say he actually um, tried not to come here today. Did you know that? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, because the only reason that, that, that struck me is that because the fact that 
y'all are in a good space now. Yeah. He came to you in the, this gas station, yet he didn't want to come here. Why was that? Um, it was a lot of drama with his situation at his house. Um, what does that mean, like a girlfriend? His, yeah, wife? his girlfriend at the time didn't want him to come at all. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why, but um, after we got the DNA test done and he texted me saying, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I was like, no, you're not going to do that. Like, we're going to, we're going to do this. Yeah. So, um. Hold on, I, cause I just have to step back because when I hear information about, when I hear information like that, I can only imagine the emotional toll it takes on you. Mm -hmm. What was that doing to you emotionally and mentally? It was, it was a lot. It really did hurt. Like, I, if I could explain it, it felt like my chest was probably just shattering into a million pieces. Makes Cause sense. you know, I wanna, I wanna know, you know? Yeah, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I wasn't gonna let him back out. So I pulled up at his house, Yeah. me and my husband, and we pulled up and we told him like, you're coming. You're coming <laughs> with <laughs> yeah. us. You're not I backing out. Yes. We're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm proud of you for that strength. I'm proud of you for that strength. You know, Hope has spent the last two decades trying to find information about her father until three years ago when she met a man at a local gas station who told her he could be her father. Everyone, it's time to meet that man who was at that gas station. Please welcome Tim to the show. How you doing, Tim? Good, good. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So you asked Hope to take the DNA test and then you didn't show up, almost didn't I show up today. I let somebody talk me out of it. Okay, yeah, what happened? Uh, Hope says she thinks that you're afraid of knowing the truth. Is that true? Why did Tim almost back out of this situation? She's got the right to know, but it hurts me. Don't go away because the outcome of this incredible DNA test, there you go, if you can open it, will change Hope's life forever. Okay. we go to this gas station, this guy's like, hey, I think I might possibly be your father. I would like to do a DNA test. Were you surprised by that? A little bit. Yeah, yeah I can I mean, imagine. Who wouldn't? Producers say he actually tried not to come here today. Did you know that? Yeah. You almost didn't I show up today. I about let somebody talk me out of it. Okay, yeah, what happened? Uh, somebody being selfish, I'd say. And um, I should not have let anybody standing in my way like yeah. I did or did, almost did. Almost did, yeah. Yes. Good thing you got this strong lady right here. Yes. That was like, yes. yeah. She actually pulled up with my other two daughters. Yep, she done. Oh, you did? Other daughters. Oh, they pulled yes. up as a pot. They was yeah. like, uh-uh, not today. Yep. That's yeah. hilarious. Yep. Uh, so why do you think, Hope says she thinks that you're afraid of knowing the truth. Is that true? No, no. And as for myself, as well as for her, I was willing to do it for mm -hmm. her. And, and I wanted to do it for the both of us. Because for one, I didn't want a child growing up without me. But for two, she, she's got the right to know. Mm -hmm. um, What's making you emotional right now? the things she might have missed out on. Yeah. And I hate that for her. But it hurts me. So part of this is also a little bit of guilt. No, I wouldn't say guilt because um, her mom had- I said that is because you were there when she was in the courtroom with your cousin. Yes. And you found out. Yes. I, my cousin had asked me to go, and whenever the judge ordered him to take the DNA test and everything, uh, an aunt of hers had called out in front of the judge in the whole courtroom that she wanted me to take a paternity test. And, uh, you know, and I was ready. I was willing. I would have done whatever it took or I needed to do, you know, for, for the state or for a situation, whatever. Yeah, and, but then um, you waited years. That's the only reason I brought up the guilt situation yeah, is yeah. because it's like well, your feeling of like she missed out there the was, things uh, that she didn't have. There was a lot of guys in line in front of me, 
Yeah. That you know they had to go through. Yeah. And everything and yeah. And uh, is your mom? Do you have a good relationship with your mom now? No, I don't speak to her at all. No. Hope. What What were the big moments that were missed in your life um, of not having a dad? A lot of things like learning how to drive and like you know small school. Yeah, mm -hmm. changing the tire, you know, school activities. Like, I was in choir, and I did color guard, you know. And none of my family ever showed up for any of that. So it was just oh, me. No. Just a lot in my whole life. You said there was a, a, just to use your language, a long line of men before you. Yes. That, you know, when you were considering a dad. And you said you had two of them tested. Mm -hmm. Two of them. Has there, was there other guys that you knew of that were tested or talked to? Not that I've talked to. I know that there was, like you said, two other guys. They said that there was other, there was another two more DNA tests, but I don't know the name of those guys. Got it. Well, listen, Hope's husband, Devin, is here in the audience. I want to talk to him right now. Devin? <laughs> so, Devin, thank you for being here today to support your wife. Um, why do you have concerns about Tim being Hope's father? Uh, I just seen my wife cry a lot about missing out on that stuff, and I just, uh, yeah. I think Tim's a good guy. I just don't want to see her get hurt anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to see her miss out on that. I don't want to see her cry anymore. It's, a, it's been a pretty emotional journey for her. Yeah. I haven't been here for the whole thing, but I've been here for enough of it. Uh, I just don't want to see my wife get hurt anymore. If he is her dad, I want him to be there. We have kids and stuff, and uh, I think it'd be a good deal. I think it'd be a, a great addition to our family. Yeah, that's great. Um, thank you, Devin, so much. Listen, everyone, Hope has waited 23 years to find her birth father. And for the last three years, she's wondered if Tim was the dad she's been waiting for. Before we reveal the outcome of the DNA, Tim, are you ready to finally know the truth? I am. You are? What really? would this truth mean to you if she is your daughter? I'd have another daughter, yeah. and I'd be a grandpa. Uh -huh. You're a very sweet man. You're a very sweet man. Hope, are you ready to have these answers? Yes, I'm beyond ready. Like, just to know I have siblings and my babies have more aunts, yeah. more family, yeah. a grandpa they can talk to, you know? Yeah. A blood grandpa. Yeah. Are you hoping he's your father? Yeah, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the DNA outcome. This has the answers of whether or not Tim is your father. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. There you go. If you can open it and read out loud what it says. I'm a little nervous right now. Oh, yeah. Take your time. I understand. This is a big moment. I know that she's going to get a big hug. Either way. Okay. I'm not even ready. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. The results that will change Hope's life forever will come out next. Hope says she thinks that you're afraid of knowing the truth. Is that true? No, I was willing to do it. She's got the right to know. Then you waited years. There was a lot of guys in line in front of me. Yeah. Well, this is the DNA outcome. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. Either way. OK. It says, um, Hope, Tim is not your father. I'm sorry. It's OK. It'll be all right. I'm sorry. Sorry. You've been set on this path that it, you had nothing to do with. It was your mother's choices. Um, I want to get your husband to come down here because your, your wife is hurting. Can you come down here with your wife? Tim, I'm going to thank you for being here. I'm going to let you. them two have a moment. I can talk yes. to them. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll see you backstage. You can thank, see you. Here, thank you. Thank you for being here. When I'm 50. <laughs> I just don't understand why she has to make it so hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so stressful. 
This is kind of stupid that I gotta find her baby daddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very heartbreaking for you. And I, 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 one of my things for me is I hate when I see adults who have to still deal with the pain of their parents who didn't make the proper choices for them. It breaks my heart, it breaks my heart. And that's what you're dealing with. You constantly have to like, you're fixing her mess from years ago. Yeah. But I'll tell you the beauty of this is that you do have at least someone who loves you, who's around you, who can, who's supporting you. So at least you're not alone in this. And I know it's not enough to fill that hole of not having your father, um, but at least you should know that you have this. Right. Ah, oh, she knows I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Now you shared with a Facebook message you received yesterday with my producers. Yeah. Can we take a look at this? Yeah, if you want. So this is a man that hit you up and said, I know I should have reached out a long time ago, but my life has been a mess except the last year since I've been out and doing good, working and getting my life in order. If you're all right with it, maybe we could talk on here some and to get to know each other. And maybe when I can get the money up, we can check and see if I'm your dad. So um, I'm a big believer in fate. I even got chills reading that because I think as you're coming on this show, the fact that you would get that message when you're arriving here, and he's saying he doesn't have the money, I would love to support you and pay for him to come here to get you your DNA test and get you your answer. Would that help you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to have to wait another three years like you did with Tim. How does that work? Does that work for us to give you the answers mm -hmm. and help? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah? These things become personal to me because I don't want to see you hurting. And I see the brave face you're putting on. I see the strength that you're trying to hold on. But I don't want you to have to live your life trying to be this strong woman. I want you to have to feel like you can actually get the answers you need. Because I know you have the strength in there. And I know you've been putting on a brave face and being strong your entire life. And it's getting exhausting, right? I know it is. I know it is. And I'm sorry. So I want to be here for you and help you to not feel exhausted anymore. Are you willing? Yes. All right, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Give me a hug. I'm here for you. I'm really here for you. I'm going to make this happen. You're a good guy. Yeah, yeah you're a good guy. All right, listen, everyone. Stay with us, friends. We are going to be right back with more. Yeah. This woman knows her man cheats on her. So this is a video of you having sex with another woman. And knows she's in a toxic relationship. Are you dumb? What Are you she, dumb? Well, look at this unhealthy communication right here. But does she actually have the inner strength to leave him? I didn't come on the show to end this. I come on the show to fix this. I love you. You are the fuck. Get off my stage. Do if you caught your man paying another woman's bills? I can tell you what I would do, but I, this, ain't, this ain't me. Now, what if the first months of dating, you'd never been to your man's house? And what if you walked into your boyfriend's house and found him naked in bed with another woman? Most women, and myself, would walk away. But my next guest, yes, yes, but my next guest, with no judgment, Shanice decided to stay. She continued to deal with his toxic behavior. But my question is, why? She says she still loves him. And I want to know what's going on in their relationship. So let's bring Shanice out. Welcome, Shanice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Shanice, you cute. You fly. Can I have a hug? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. This little jacket situation is giving. Thank you. It needs to be giving. <laughs> All right? Yes, I'm living. OK, so now tell me, because we just heard those things in the intro, mm -hmm. which I even said some of the people would have just walked away. But you decided to say, so when did the trust first break in your relationship? So one day we were sitting in a car, mm -hmm. and he was paying a light bill. So when I looked at the light bill, I'm like, whose name is that? It's a girl. He's like, oh, this is the old, uh, older couple. So I'm like, all right, I didn't say anything. I'm like, okay. So later on, he left his Apple Watch. I went through it. He had a whole roommate, well, girlfriend. 
not even a roommate, girlfriend. And... And how long at this point were y'all dating? Um, six months. So you're six months in and you discover not only is he paying someone else's bills, but he's in a full relationship with them. Yes. Okay, six months in. Okay. So by then I had feelings. I loved him. Yeah. So I stayed. Got it. And how many times did he cheat on you? Oh, God. <sighs> a lot. A lot? I know over, like, 12 girls. <laughs> Probably more. So you found him in the house with another woman. Sure did. And you gave my producers an audio clip of this. Can I hear what happened? It don't matter if she's here or not. It don't matter. Why? I yell Shut no up. matter what. Shut up. Yo, Nicole Lee. Shut up. We're gonna leave. Shut up. I yell no matter Shut what. Up. Shut you up. Shut up. Ain't nobody trying to Shut show up. off. Yeah. Dummy. Yeah. You yeah. in my house. Yeah. Dummy. Shut up. Like a bum. Shut up. Bitch, you a bum. bum. So you find him in the house from that audio clip and he's arguing with you, though you're defending, you're arguing with him because he has a woman in the house. Yes. What was going through your mind at that moment? I was hurt. I really loved him and to like see that and he didn't care, the disrespect, he's like the lies. And when, how long in that, into your relationship was that audio clip? Mm. Is that first within the first six months as well, seven months? That was like just two years in. That's two years in. We lived together at this time. And so now what happens with friends at the Friendsgiving? So basically he was mad because I left the house and he wanted me to come over. He said that he was sad because his grandmother, it was his grandmother's birthday and he wanted me to come see him. But I told him I'm with my family and my friends and if I have time, I'll see you later. He got mad because I didn't hit him up but I was with my family. I don't ever see my family. My family doesn't get along with him. Yeah. They don't want me with him, so I want to be with my family. And he Does your just family went, know what goes on between you, these incidents? Yeah, they you don't. You share it with them? They don't want to talk about it no more. They're like, if you want to deal with him, that's all on you, like, that's mm. it. Oh, because you tell involved. them every time something's happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he just blew up. It was a big blow up mm -hmm. until we got here. Okay, what happened when you got here? Are you in? They wait here, the hotel, just getting here too. He just picks fights. What were y'all arguing about this morning? He was mad because I didn't stay in the room with him. Because you didn't stay in the room? Mm -hmm. What you don't know is anytime we have guests, I put in my personal requests, especially for me as someone who wants to make sure there's resolution when it comes to your mental health and your emotional health, is that I separate people. I don't put them, even if they're in a happy space, I separate them because if you are coming here and if I'm gonna be able to get honest communication, I can't have you all planning what you're gonna say. I can't have someone manipulating the other person. So I am the one who requests for all of my guests to stay in separate hotel rooms. So my requests start an argument, because he's aware I'm the one who requests that. So he, it started an argument with you mm -hmm. all. He just kept going and going. My producers also told me that he's holding your school books captive. Yes, he is. If you, if you don't, the direct words my producer told me is that if you don't leave here with him, that he's not going to be your school book. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me more about that. And he knows my state boards is next month. And he's like, if I don't go, like, if I don't be with him, I can't have my books. He wants to hurt me like I hurt him. But you hurt me. You damaged me. You broke me as a woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, listen, there's always two sides to every story. And I think it's time to hear Felix's side of the story. So everyone, let's bring Felix out. Hi, Felix. How you doing? How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, take a seat. So I got to get right into this. So we heard that you cheated on her several times. Is that true? Yes, it is. And why did you want to cheat on Shanice? Um, Instead of just staying single? To, to be honest with you, uh, I don't know why I cheated. I can't, I can't really give you an answer about why I cheated. But I did do it at the time, and I'm sorry for it. Like, yeah. And then for her to keep on bringing the past back is just... It's just making a strain, and that's why we argue. Well, when is the last time you cheated? Karamo, if it's all about cheating, then I'm sorry about cheating. Felix will explain his side of the story next. She's taking pictures on social media, okay. all drunk. Could it actually turn out that he's the one being mistreated? She never answers my calls for affection. She's never there for me as I'm there for her. How many times did he cheat on you? Oh, God. I know over, like, 
12 girls. We heard that you cheated on her several times. Is that true? Yes, it is. I did do it at the time, and I'm sorry for it. Well, when is the last time you cheated? The last time I cheated was a while ago. It's been three months since, since we had our, our, our last situation. Our last situation has been three months. And how long have y'all been together? We've been together almost three years now. So three years, and in your, from your words, the last time you had a situation or cheated was three months ago. That's the last time we had a situation where we argued and we broke up. Okay. It was three months ago. And was that based on you cheating? Um, it was based on me doing the dumb of kicking her out and stuff cheating. like that. Shot, let me talk. Cheating, though. You like to talk? Let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> let me talk. Okay. Please. All right. Go ahead. Karamo, if it's all about cheating, then I'm sorry about cheating. I, I can't take it back. I can't go back and take myself out of that position. I gave him my camera password. I gave him my location. Every time I go you out there, that off. Oh my god! Oh my god! You want me to go backstage? You want to finish? You finish. You want to talk about? You want to talk about? You want to talk about the <laughs> argument from the hotel? Go ahead. All right, audience, yeah, let's go. talk about the, the argument yourself. about the yeah. hotel. Please let's talk me. about Please it. Keep going. Right, so we at the hotel. Matter of fact, before the hotel, we yeah. get a call saying that we 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 need to um we need to get rooms. Mm -hmm. They asked me, do we want separate rooms? Well, this, this you know this. This is a request of mine. So right, right, right. I understand that. Yes. Not, a, not a problem. Mm -hmm. I was playing around with her, and I told her, oh, we're getting separate rooms. She was like, huh? She went, huh? Right? So I was like, nah, I was just playing. We, we, we get in the same room. So boom, we get here. It's separate rooms. And then all of a sudden, we get into an argument about the you room situation. You started going crazy. Oh, my Lord. Acting like a monkey. Can I talk? What, like, what is your point of view? All right, so listen. So I'm... We're, we're going to the room. You we're, can see we're, it. we're going to the room. I had one key. She had another key. Mm -hmm. Her friend, which came with her, was supposed to stay in the hotel. So I was like, here, here's, here's my key so you could be on the same floor as us. Mm -hmm. So come to find out, she didn't want me in the room. She said, no, you go to your room and I'm going to go to my room. We was arguing. Again, you started let me yelling talk, in the though. You was can yelling. I, I told you I didn't I, want you coming to the room. Can I finish my conversation? You kept going to my room. Like, because you're lying. Get it. No, I'm not lying. Can't even have a conversation. No, go ahead. I'm, about I'm gonna to let you talk. Go ahead, I'm gonna talk. let you talk. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So I want to ask you about this because right now what I'm doing is I'm going to do the same thing I did to her. I don't know if you heard this before you came out. I said I want to hear your side of the story. What happens with the books? Because she's saying that you are holding the books ransom if y'all don't leave here together. I'm not holding the books ransom. I, I I left them I left them somewhere and I was supposed to pick them up. We 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 decided to do this thing. And you then... told me you're safe. Shaw, you know they wasn't in the house, bro. Oh when the my hell God, did I get them? Oh my God, when did the I get lies them? do not stop with you. When did I get them? I told you they wasn't in the house. Okay, keep going. So you tell me that if she doesn't leave here today, you're giving her her books? Yeah, I'll give her books. I don't care about that, bro. I've, I've helped lie. her with her school. That's a lie? You sure about that? Keep going. What about that project that I did for you? You helped me. 28 I'm pages. I'm your I did girlfriend. it for her. I designed the project for her. Like, I did it all for you. Like, are you not understanding that? I want you to strive. I want you to be bigger. Like, I, I want to get you a storefront so that you'll be able to do your esthetician stuff. Like, so you say you want her to strive and you want her to be better, but do you see how your actions could be bringing her down? But do you understand, Karamo? That, I mean, that's like, a plain like, question. Yeah, yeah, do you yeah, see yeah. how they're bringing her down? I'm not saying that my actions is not bringing her down, but does she understand that her actions is bringing me down? In what way? You tell me how. In what way is that she never answers my, my calls for affection? She never, she's never there for me as I'm there for her. Let's talk about the week, the week before. My grandmother passed away about two years ago. It was her birthday, the week before. I kept seeing timeline, all my grandmother pictures, everything, all of that. I, all week I was asking her, babe, can you just come by, chill with me, not have sex with me? Can you come by, chill with me, console me? Because I'm feeling sad. Every single day that week I asked her. Every day she had an excuse. Oh, I got to go to school. I got to do this. I got to go to work. That's fine. So come Saturday, which is Friendsgiving, I said, I call her up, and she's like, oh, babe, I'm, I'm playing a game with my family. I'll call you when I'm done. Four in the morning comes. I didn't get a call from her. I look on Snapchat. She's taking pictures on Snapchat. Okay. All drunk. Yeah, OK. That, and that's my problem. Like she, she looks at social media. So has she been? Has she been like this since the beginning of your relationship? When the beginning of your relationship, were you affectionate? Yes, very. Very. What changed for you? The cheating, the lying. But but my, okay. whole, my, my whole thing is. Hold on. We have we have a ping, um, and my producer told me they want to bring me my evidence back because there's something on your phone, Shanice, that you want to show me.
a shocking revelation is about to come out. So this is a video of you having sex with another woman. Oh! But will Felix convince Janice to stay in this relationship? I didn't come on the show to end this. I come on the show to fix this. I love you. You are the guy. You're my soul. If it's all about cheating, then I'm sorry about cheating. I gave him my camera password, I gave him my location. Every time I go you out there- You turned that off. Oh my God. You want me to go backstage? You want to finish? You... She's never there for me as I'm there for her. We have a ping. There's something on your phone, Shanice, that you want to show me. I don't know what this is. What is it that you want to show me? A video. Okay. What is this video you want to show me? When, when is this? Do, okay, so, <laughs> sorry, I got a couple. So this is a video of you having sex with another woman. Oh. Um, and why? Like, I don't why understand. do you have this on? How did you get this on your um, phone? From how his did you Snapchat. Get this video? So you got this from his Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Why do you have the video? Oh, cause I went through his phone and I went to his pictures and I seen the time he was with her having sex when I was supposed to be with him. So what is your thing to that? I was 100% wrong, because I'm like, I, there's nothing else she I can say. She never left through this whole relationship from the beginning to the end. There's nothing else I end. can say, Karamo, is that she I, been I around. was you wrong 100%. You need to go be with her. I was but I'm wrong. confused, because she showed me a video of, first of all, like, the fact that you've seen that video, that would be, for me, enough to say, I'm done. It broke me. I get I it broke you. I get it broke you. But I don't get why you keep going back. I don't understand that. Me either. Well, listen, we have Shanice's best friend and co-worker, Maddie, in our audience today. Maddie, um, what have you witnessed? I've witnessed, I mean, over the last 20, 48 hours, because I've spent two days with these, with both of them. Um, over the last 48 hours, I've witnessed um, Flex be immensely manipulative with the weight, with the words that he says. You don't understand, bro, but the verbiage that you use, it don't make you look Mainly, it makes you look like a punk because it makes you look like you want to control somebody. And in reality, bro, in reality, no disrespect, but you about to push 40 years old. You got to grow up, my Like, that's just how it is. You really have to grow up. You treat my best friend like she's, like, like dog Like, you treat her like you dog her out all the time, bro. And that's not, that's not cool. That's my best friend. You a beautiful girl, Shanice. I swear to God, you a beautiful girl. And you deserve so much better than he can ever give you. I promise you, baby. Much love, for real. So he says that your he says that your language is manipulative. Are you manipulative in your language? I mean, I don't feel like I am. So I can tell you from here, one of the main words I wrote in your communication is manipulation. Okay. So there is manipulation in the way that you say things. Do you see you being manipulative? I mean, I don't see it that way. And why, yeah. why don't you see it in that way? I mean, like, 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 let me explain the situation. Like, like yesterday, the whole situation that we, we, we got into an argument about her um, staying in the room with me mm -hmm. was, um, so we went out, we went to the mall and stuff, and, and then we came back, and, and when we came back, she went to her room or whatever, I went to my room, and she was wondering why I had an attitude, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't like to be away from you, and you know that. And we, when, she came, when she came to my room, but, we talked about that. But even that, that's part of manipulation and control. To be able to say to somebody, you're going here, mm -hmm. because I think language is important, so we must learn the language. So if you're watching this at home, you can recognize this in your own life. If someone says, I'm gonna go to the mall, and then I come back and I'm pissed, and I got an attitude now, that's a toxic behavior, because now it's like, well, you Reverie. left me for a second. So now I'm manipulating you emotionally to want to come back to me, but I'm also controlling you to make you feel like you can't leave without me later in the future. That's manipulation and control. Okay. Do you see that? I mean, as you're saying it now, I see it. I think that unconsciously you've always known that you have exhibited this behavior. I think the thing for me, if I'm an outsider, is that you know you're going to get away with it because she's always going to come back. So when you have someone who's going to always come back, why would I ever need to change my behavior? But I will say this to you. I'm listening here, and yes, you cheated. We, your stuff is laid out. And now that I've given you that language to understand that you are, you are manipulating her and you are controlling her, I, you get it. But for you, this is a bigger piece for me. You're addicted to drama. 
Did you realize that? Shanice knows she's in a toxic relationship. Oh, are you dumb? Oh, are you geez. dumb? Well, look at this unhealthy communication right here. But does she actually have the inner strength to leave him? I didn't come on the show to end this. I come on the show to fix this. I love you. Stay tuned. So this is a video of you having sex with another woman. Oh. The fact that you've seen that video, that would be for me enough to say, I'm done. But I don't get why you keep going back. If your stuff is laid out, you are manipulating her and you are controlling her, this is the bigger piece for me. You're addicted to drama. Did you realize that? You can be addicted to a negative emotion and that is what you're exhibiting. You are addicted to it. And even though you're saying it is breaking your self-esteem, even though you're saying that it is breaking me, it's hurting me, you are still, just like an addict who sees their body deteriorating, they see their life crumbling around them, they still say, I want to go back for more. The fact that you've done two key things that I wrote down. You call your family members consistently to get validation for the drama you're in, and they've told you and set a boundary that they don't want to hear it anymore, yet you're still trying to reach out to them. That means you want more of the drama to be around you. The second and the biggest piece is that you're holding on to a video of your man having sex with another woman, and it hasn't made you leave. It hasn't made you leave. You are looking at a man that you say you love have sex with another woman, and you think that is healthy. No, I know it's not healthy. Then why are you doing it? Because you're addicted to it. The only way for you to get over your addiction and for you to actually be able to confront him and say, these are my boundaries, this is what I deserve, is if you are able to say, just like any other addict, that you don't want to be addicted to drama anymore. I don't, and he knows that. Okay. <laughs> you're saying he knows it. Do you I believe it? I, I believe it. Okay, then. So if you don't want to be addicted to drama anymore, first thing is that you need to delete that out of your phone. <laughs> because you're looking for validation to say, oh my gosh, look, look, look. Go into the deleted, no, go into the deleted folder too. <laughs> go into the deleted folder too. Because I know how that works. So now, you said you deleted that from your phone. I'm yeah. sure there's other stuff in there that you're going to need to go through later and yeah, to delete. delete. Yeah. But the question is, if you're addicted to this negative behavior, do you want to stop being addicted to this? I do. Then if you want to stop, when you know when an addict is addicted to drugs, when someone is addicted to gambling, what do you do to drop the addiction? You have to get the drug out of your life. Exactly, and he doesn't you? understand that. Do you understand it? You I keep understand. pointing at him. I'm that sorry, shows I me do. the addiction. That shows me addiction. Are okay. you ready to say it's up to you? Because I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm you not telling you, it has to be on you. To fix this, or we came on the show to end this? I love you, and I really want to be with you. I've been very clear and about I behaviors, really, manipulation, I, and control. I, I really, he told you he's not giving you your books. How much do your books cost? $500. I will give you $500 to make sure that just in case he doesn't give you your books, you can still continue your career. Thank so you. now, you have your books. You said, are y'all still living together? No. no. So you're not living with him anymore. Nope. So you're not living with him. The only thing he has is your books. So it's up to you now to say whether you want to be addicted to this or not. I don't. So what do you want to I say to your man? Listen. I'm willing to change. Listen, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here on the, I, I didn't listen. come on this show. I didn't come on this listen, show I to, to I didn't come on this show to end this. I come on this show to fix this. Like, I love you. I love you. You, you know what's so crazy to me, though? You know, yesterday at the barbershop, right? When I told them, oh, you can, they can keep you. You told that you told the man, you told no, you told the man that he can have me. And what did he do? Took put his arm around me and took you me. You said they can keep hold on. me, though. Yo, what the what are, you, are you dumb? What are you, you dumb? What do you want to say? Look at this unhealthy communication right here. I can't do. Do you want to go? Goodbye. No, 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 no. That's part of manipulation. Recognize behavior. That is not him trying to say, I'm, he's manipulating you. I know. Let me show you I'm going to leave. I'm done. So that later on I can say, well, baby, you put me in that situation and I'm going to leave. That's it. That's manipulation. Time. Are you done? I'm done. Can you tell him? Because I noticed there, right there, you couldn't find the words to tell him. You went into another story. Because I want him to know something. That's why. But see, part of the you wanting to know him is part of that addiction. It's part of that feeling of, like, let's have one more argument. Let's have one more oh. thing. I'm sorry.
That's I just it, wanted you to. You don't need to apologize. I you don't know. need to apologize. He is verbally abusive. He cuts you off. He's been cheating on you. You know all the things. Mm -hmm. But there's something about you that's still holding on to this negative behavior. And he's going to continue to manipulate you, control you, and cheat on you until you make the decision to say enough is enough. And I realized right there that you weren't, you didn't have the, you didn't have the courage to say enough is enough. No, it is. I'm done. That's it. Okay, I am single. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am proud of you for ending this. I am proud of you, and I don't want to diminish the fact that you just ended something, but I need you, sister, to learn, don't engage anymore. Let me tell you something. Somebody who don't want drama does this. Bye, boy, bye, I'm done. And some, their, friend come, yeah. their friend comes up to them, and they be like, what happened? They be like, I'm done, girl. I don't even want to talk about it. Let's go That's have a cocktail. Y'all ever been to that place? Y'all yeah. know when you get to that place, you are not about the drama anymore. That's the place you need to get to. I believe you're going to get them. I believe you're going to get them. Thank there. you so much. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I do love you. I do love you. And I'm going to check up on you, okay? Okay. I'm going to check up on you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep what? Talking and growing. I love you all. <laughs>